All right, I want to go over one more time the purpose of this channel. Uh, the purpose of this channel is to show you what I'm working on. That's really not a purpose, okay, but that's what it is, okay. Whenever I'm working on something and I see something, I think, you know what, maybe I should tell people they don't know that. Now, in the case of ICs, TTLs, the legs are, are basically very oxidized. I, I, I always tell you this trick. Anytime uh, stuff is oxidized really bad, it's, they're almost black, those legs. All right? Now, uh, other people, ah, spray it with deox. And I always make those voices, okay? Because they're wrong. And um, I see that one of the major repair guys, he sprays the pots and he works them back and forth. He's quite fanatical, okay? But the problem, problem is, a few weeks later, the pot insides goes black. And it'll actually get worse. You, you can, you can get, it's like eye drops. You put eye drops in your eye because they're tearing. And then uh, it fixes the problem temporarily. And then your eye becomes addicted to the eye drops. Okay? So you didn't fix, fix the fact that, fact that you need glasses. Or you got eye strain because you're on the computer too long. You put eye drops in. And temporarily it fixes the problem. Or you need a new set of glasses. There's another one. There's a whole list. Uh, you have allergies. And allergy medicines basically go the same way. They dry your sinuses out. There's side effects. Well, you, you look at these pins. Now, some people tell you, ah, those pins are gold-plated. Ah, ah, ah. Okay? Or they're, they're silver-plated. Ah, ah, ah. Well, let me tell you one thing about these pins. Notice it sticks to a magnet. So those pins are steel. And I'm going to tell you, most of them are plated with some type of silver, maybe silver and lead, um, stuff whatever it is uh, yes there are ones that are gold plated so you got a bunch of TTL chips now we're going to get to the solution eraser my hero okay you're like man you use that eraser a lot yes okay because when we clean this okay now you can stroke it many different ways uh, I like to come along the very top of it and get the wide part of the pins okay now they seem to be brightening right in front of your eyes. Okay? Now, that's really not where the sockets, some sockets do go this way on the pins, but some go this way. All right? Remember that. Very important. Uh, I used to see guys repair stuff the wrong way all the time. Okay, so that's nice and bright now. We didn't do any damage. It's going to be good for three more years before it starts to tarnish again. Maybe longer, depending on it. Because you got to remember, this is a 50-year-old IC chip, and the legs are, are black, okay? Not jet black, but they were getting black. Now, to get the back side, notice the eraser has a cut on it, an angle. Hopefully, all this is in the frame. And then you come underneath here, and you, you stroke it, okay? And now the pin... It takes a little while, but notice the cut lets you go in there. Now they're getting pretty good. Take my word for it; they're getting pretty good. I, I you know, I got this from my uh, pretty far from my eyeballs. I don't have my glasses on, but now you do that side. Now you come out and you do the outside pin. Okay, the other outside of the pin, and then because this is a triangle. You can now come between each two sets of pins. And you go up and down. And you can feel it going in between the pins. And then you eyeball it and touch it up. But that's how you that's how you correctly fix an IC chip that's really old, okay? And uh, now it'll take solder. You didn't do any damage to the plating. All you took off was the oxide, okay? You didn't spray it. Oh, I spray it with deox. I don't have any trouble soldering. Now, I've repaired your boards. I, your, uh, your, your kind, your ilk. Uh, that's what, what I was always doing. Uh, guy, guy, one guy actually took uh, all the chips off a of circuit board. He put all new chips in backwards. And uh, the guy that was sent over there to fix it, because the guy went home. Um, he got a phone call, a mysterious phone call, and he went home. 
and this other guy had to go over there and fix the board. And he's sitting there, and he starts melting down. He was having other physical, uh, mental problems with his family. And so I wonder, I said, what's wrong? And he says, you know what this guy did? I said, tell me. I know all his tricks. What did he do? He says he took every chip out of this circuit board and put all new ones in backwards. I said, I said the guy needs glasses. He really shouldn't even be on the job. But anyway, I said, take the circuit board over to the mod girl. Let her take all those chips out with the desoldering tool. Uh, it was a pace machine, if you want to actually know what it was. And then I said, throw all the chips in the garbage and start over. And he did. He got the board working. I said, and if you notice real closely, uh, the guy who changed a TTL chip, uh, say it was a 7404. Well, some of those chips were made in like, a, you could have a, a 70, 1974 14th week. So the, the day code on the chip would be 7414. But it would be written differently. Uh, the uh, Texas Instrument and that, they would put the, uh, this might actually be a Texas Instrument. Right down here is the actual number. But he would read the day code over here, and he'd change the chip and put in a 7414, which would be, the chip was a 74, 1974, 14th week, and he put the 7414 in that in that place. And you, there is a 7414. I believe it's a Smith trigger. Uh, type of chip uh, inverter Smith trigger sort of I sort of remember that number but I worked around these people you'd say to yourself nobody can be this stupid and they are and one time I the guy couldn't get the circuit board working so I flipped it over and I had a magic marker with me or um, um, a sharpie and I circled a bunch of chip uh, traces that were broken and he couldn't see them he needed glasses he was so vain he's still to this day he's vain Okay, so he went wear glasses, and the boss listened to the whole conversation. And then that guy went home. He would always have a habit of leaving early and stuff. Well, anyway, boss comes over, he goes, the boss flips the, the, the circuit board over. He goes, you know, he never fixed those traces. I said, did you listen to him keep talking? Yeah, he goes, yeah. He said, that's what he's good for, okay? Talking his way out of everything. But I, I get a kick out of uh, the people that leave messages, and I mute people. And I go in and I see that there's comments that aren't there because they're muted. And uh, a lot of them like to tell me about this guy that's got this this really big website. And uh, he made it, his square foot of his of his, uh, his experimenter's room has gotten like huge, okay? And uh, whenever he, he does a rebuild of anything, it's, it's a freaking museum piece. And then he bodges it. He, he takes out a, 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 a metal can that's got three capacitors in it. And then uh, he solders three capacitors to the chassis. I saw that. I'm like, you're a bodge. You're, you're a dandy. I, that, that's, I'm like, when you're restoring something, you open that can up. And uh, there's, there's many places on the internet. I did, uh, I did the, uh, the flower pot cans. And how to open them up by grinding them open. If you're doing a restoration, that's how you do it. But this guy gets all these really good uh, radios and stuff in mint condition. And then he goes in and he, he changes the capacitors. And he has a device that can tell him which is the outer foil on the... I, I was watching. I was like, this is the guy people keep telling me I should be like. Okay? All right. He never tells you about how to clean an IC up. Uh, he never tells you how to set the trims on a remote control uh, helicopter. I, I have people, thank you for doing that video. Thank you for doing it. He does stuff that you'll never touch. You're never going to get that radio in that condition and do his, whatever he calls a restoration. I know there's many levels of restorations. Okay. But what he's doing is a dandy. I worked, I had a boss that was a dandy. I had several bosses that were dandy. They barely get their hands dirty, you know. And what they do to something, you don't want to own it after they're done with it, okay? Like this one dandy, uh, he didn't like the way we these in our city we had these giant bakelite uh, um, fixtures and cabinets, all made out of bakelite, which is radioactive, by the way. And there were these little round um, plexiglass discs, and he paid a guy overtime to come in and polish them, but. The polish caused them to shatter, go dark uh, yellow, and then shatter. And when I started working there, I said something about, what the hell happened here? And then they told me the story. I said, yeah, he was going to make the place look like a like a, 
uh, a dandy would make. Let's use that word, dandy. Uh, make the fixtures look like dandy. Mr. Dandy made them look bad because that was the first thing I said. What the hell happened to this? You know, Bakelite with, with plexiglass on it. It was really uh, unique looking. And then, he did, and then they never, couldn't get the funding or whatever to replace all the, uh, the plexiglass that yellowed and shattered. Okay, so I had a look at that stuff, and I'm like, here he wanted everything to look clean. He, he bugged me on my chassis. Uh, what's that writing in there? I had the guy before me would put uh, little limericks inside the chassis. And then as I got each chassis, I had to race them out and clean up the chassis. And then he, he used to run the power up to, the, up to a tube that's being, well, uh, let's see, it'd be like a 3A3C. The tube, when you check this chassis, when you walk by, you look to see that the tube's gone. So he ran wires up to make the tube light up. But the tube wasn't really, there was no high voltage. So he'd run these tubes through tests, and they really weren't even on. And uh, the engineers caught on to that. And then I took over the job, and I start giving them real results. And they come up, and they start talking to me. They go, you know, that kid that was in here before you, I go, yeah. I said, uh, uh, you got a lot of readings. And he says, the tube was never under any kind of voltage. I said, yep, you're absolutely right. And I told him some stuff. I said, you got to keep this a secret. But he says, but i got to bring you more tests. So <laughs> it's so funny. They started bringing me more tests to redo. I, we were pulling tubes out of, out of, out of uh, stock and giving me 10 tubes to test because they were getting callbacks from the customer because that kid didn't test the tubes correctly. So all the time he's making little comments. Well, little did he know, his boss kept him. He didn't fire him. He went to a side. He was no longer union protected. And then the boss never gave him a raise. The whole time I was there, I got a union raise. So I was making more money than this kid that had my job. See, he transferred to the other side uh, of the department, and he got he got more money. But he never got a raise after that. And then my I got a raise from the union, and I was making more money. And boy, was he pissed. Okay, I've gone through it all with people. The guy that really does the job, that gives you some hints and clues. And if you've been watching my videos, you notice I bought an, an engraving bit. I'm going to call it an engraving bit, but the other, some people call it a graver bit. Engraving's the process. I, it's annoying, okay? It's probably a closed field. Well, I bought this bit, and everybody sells the bit, and everybody sells the handle, but the handle doesn't go with the bit. So I dug around and found out that the bit actually goes for air-driven uh, engraving tools, and there is a manual mushroom or palm uh, engraver that goes with so I bought a palm engraver that comes with a bit so now I got two bits and I'll have a handle and the other handle maybe eventually I will use it for something but I'm showing you what I do and why I do it you know it's like simple thing on a racer you do no harm you do no harm you're very gentle with the pins they brighten right up and they're steel they're steel oh no uh, I see chips. They're gold. No, they're gold plated. But they are they are steel. Okay? And they're gold plated. And they have to be steel. Because if they were copper or silver or gold, when you went to put them in the socket, uh, they would the pins would bend even worse than they do. You can you can uh, a lot of times too, you, you push you take the chip and you push it down, all right, and do this with the leads and the leads and you look at the back. And after you get good, you know it'll work, it'll fit in the socket. See, a lot, of, a lot of the chips come sprung out. And I'm going to tell you why they come sprung out. When they're inserted into a circuit board, that springiness of being the, the rows of pins being sprung out holds the chip in place until the girl can solder it. But when you when you got to put it into a socket, you have to squeeze them and get them in. After a while, you can do it without looking, Okay. And then they go in the socket. There's a reason for everything. And one of the things I used to do is whenever there was a new worker that came into the place, the boss would put me with him with, him with me. And I would show that. I could tell within 10 minutes that this kid was lost. Okay. And you watch when you're talking to him. Are they paying attention to you? You know, are they looking at the girls walking by? You know, we hired a few of those guys. They're bad. They're, they're, they're looking at the girls walking by. The next minute, they're not at their, their, their post or their seat or their section, whatever you want to call it. They're out chasing the girls. And then uh, what they do a lot of times is they need to uh, ship something out. They take the golden idol. 
Now, let me tell you what a Golden Idol is. It's a board you never ship out. It's the board that's in the machine that takes the place of the board you're going to repair. And you put, when you turn the machine on, you make sure you have your Golden Idol in there. You test your machine to make sure it's working. Now you turn the machine off, you take your Golden Idol out. Now you put the, the, the circuit board you got to test in. And you turn it on, you see what problems are. And every so often, if you're really smart, you put the Golden Idol back in and make sure the machine is still operating correctly. Because you could be troubleshooting something in the machine that that test or that board that needs to be repaired just burns something out. So now you put a new board in or uh, another board and you burn that board out. See, you can get the killer circuit board, uh, killer motor, killer solenoid, killer printhead problem. Uh, solenoids can short out. Uh, Old-fashioned dot matrix printers can, uh, uh, heads can short out. And uh, uh, stepper motors can short out. So when you plug in a, a new board in, one, in the machine that's got one of those problems, the board immediately burns out. So you got to constantly monitor your test bed. And these people don't do this. That's why I did repairs. Oh, thousands and thousands and thousands of circuit boards. You know, I was at, at TRW, I was there, uh, say, 14 years. Okay? And I repaired a thousand boards a month. You, you, you do the math. All different kinds of circuit boards. There were people that just sat and did the same circuit board all the time because that's as, as good as it got for them. All right. Me, I was called a roving tech. And my job, I was a nine. A ten is basically um, supervisory. I was ten for a while, but I was a nine. And the boss would come up to you and say, so and so is sick over there. He's way behind. Go over there and fix it. So you'd go over there and fix it. Okay, and then that guy would come back from, from uh, being sick or whatever. Now he could sit there for two weeks because you went over and fixed his test bed. You got him caught up. And now he's going to sit there because he's such a great worker. And then when he goes in for his review, the boss is all ready for him. His boss will never say anything to him. He's out there. Yeah, I got my work all caught up. Meanwhile, the boss goes, yeah, we sent John over there. It's caught up. And then they, they give him a little small talk. They give him a little tiny raise. And then, and then he'd come back and he'd say, I got a raise. And I, I was doubling. I was getting double, more than double in my raises than those people. But it was funny stuff. But I've been through a lot. That's all I can tell you. Uh, even like I told you, the learning curve. Uh, I'm into doing some engraving. We'll call it engraving instead of a graver and doing engravings. I found a booklet in PDF that shows the basics of engraving. It's sort of a closed field. Uh, I, oh, and I went looking at the messages. And uh, some person mentioned, it seems like a closed field. And then, of course, it asked a simple question. And I'm not going to answer the guy because I'm reading. I'm still in the reading mode. And someone come back to him. And then someone down below goes, that's not what he asked you. That always happens. Every time I go reading these, uh, basically, uh, these conferences, you see the poor guy that comes. He needs a, he needs a push in the right direction. And... Uh, they come in, they, uh, you don't want to buy that one. That company's no good. And then you get the arguments break out. It's the same thing on everything with people. Okay. And if you remember at work, you pull in, you're all happy. You just bought yourself a new Chevy. Ah, I'd never own a Chevy. Oh, shit. Rah, rah, rah. I'm a Ford man. And someone will start, you mean fix or repair daily? Ah, ah, ah. Yeah, it's there in everything. It's the same story over and over and over. Now, I tell you. I build stuff, and I work on stuff, and it's to, to get these other problems out of my head. It's like the shock on certain people in my neighborhood now that they found out that Fox was telling them stuff that wasn't true. Oh, I'm so amazed at that. You really figured that out? Yeah, yeah, they, they were, they were uh, making stuff up and telling it. Yeah, I, I tried to tell you that, but then I realized... You can't fix stupid. Stupid is as stupid does. All right? You can lead a horse to water, but here's a joke. But a pencil has to be lead. I think that's it. All right, that's it.